In Jesus' miraculous and holy and precious name, amen. We're back. We're back again. And we are in, uh, still taking our break from the book of Romans, but we promise you in the next week or so, week and a half or so, we'll be going back to Romans to finish up. But now we are in the book of Mark. The last few times we met Mark uh, 12, 29 through 31. Today we're going Mark the 12th chapter, verses 20, 32 through 34, where it begins. So the scribes said to him, well, teacher, you have spoken the truth, for there is one God and there is only, there is no other but he. And to love him with all the heart, all thy heart, with all the understanding, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself is more than the whole burnt offering and sacrifices. Now, when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. But after that, no one dared question him. And we're going to take our subject from verse 34. You are not far from the kingdom of God. You are not far from the kingdom of God. Now, how did we get to this point in the text? We got this point actually from that back in the 29th verse, verse 30 and verse 31. And then we got from there, from the he uh, 1400 years earlier, from the Hebrew Shema, Moses said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, and you shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, and all thy soul. Now, Jesus, 1400 years later, our Lord and Savior, Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, Jesus, our elder brother, Jesus, the anointed one, Jesus, the Messiah, the Hamashiach, quotes Moses. So then we go to the 12th chapter, verse 29, and Jesus answered him, the first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. Let me say something from that point, that standpoint, because there's a lot of people today who don't love the Lord that way. You have some people that are Christians, they say they're Christians, or to use the term so-called Christian, but they don't love the Lord that way. Then you've got another set, sub segment of people who believe in only what they want to believe in. There was a young man on, uh, I saw on YouTube last night, I guess YouTube or TikTok, handsome young man, he reminded me of myself maybe 30 years ago, and he was talking about he was trying to bring the Bible in, but at the same time, he was bringing in things that were esoteric. That's a big word that means mystery or mysterious or deep-seated in, in knowledge. He was bringing in uh, mysticism. He even brought in just a tinge bit of um, Egyptology, a tinge bit of, of, uh, of uh, how can I say this to you, the New Age. Stick with the Bible. Learn from God's word. If you are following God's word, and you shall, it says, you shall love the Lord your God, to my God Almighty, with all your heart, listen at this, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. Love the Lord there. You don't need to bring in other things that will confuse you. You don't have to bring in other things that will confuse other people. Follow what the Bible says and follow the Lord from that standpoint. There's a lot of this going on. And some of you younger people that might be listening to me, hey, you're not the first ones to come up with all this. I dealt with people dealing with this all the way back to the 1970s and again in the 1980s, and again in the 1990s. My brothers and my sisters, uh, there is only one God, and we shall love him. Listen to this, 
with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all our mind, and with all of our strength. Number two, the second is, verse 31, and like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Go back and look at the prior video, for there is no other commandment greater than these. We've got to love each other. Stop tearing each other down. This is something I didn't put in the last message, but if you're watching me today, and you're non-denominational, you're interdenominational, you're Methodist, you're one of my fellow Baptists, if you're a Presbyterian, um, Assemblies of God, Congregationalist, Church of Christ, Church of God in Christ, stop throwing rocks at each other. Don't you know those people in the streets don't know nothing about that? They don't know nothing. They see a sign, Church of God in Christ, they don't know the difference between that and a Baptist. If they see a Presbyterian church, they don't know the difference between a Presbyterian and a Methodist church. If they see a congregational church, they don't know the difference between a congregational and assemblies of God. Time is getting shorter and shorter. Time is getting more and more precious, and people are dying, and as my dad used to say, dying and on their way to hell. Stop throwing rocks at each other, and let's learn to love one another. We may have some differences, but let's love one another. I believe in my heart that Jesus God raised him from the dead, and we shall be saved. I believe that in my heart. I'm not going to fight you if, if you have a stance that might be slightly different. And I'm not talking about the cults, the occult, and apparent Christian groups. I'm just talking about my fellow people, brethren in other denominations. Let's stop fighting each other. Let's get somewhere and pray that we all get filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Go out in those streets. The Jesus, like he uh, compelled us to go to highways, hedges, and highways and compel them to come to my house. Stop fighting with one another. Let's love a little bit more. Now we've gotten to that point Verse 32, so the scribe said to him, well, teacher, you have spoken the truth, for there is one God and there is no other but he. So he's saying is, well, teacher, right teacher, kalos teacher, well said teacher, you are right teacher, this is true teacher. Uh, here you have a Jewish official who is agreeing with Jesus, and that's a very rare, uh, uh, that was a very rare thing because amongst the Jews, amongst the, 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 the Pharisees, amongst the Sadducees, amongst the Zealots, amongst the, uh, 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 the, the Zealots, uh, they did not always uh, agree with Jesus. In fact, they didn't agree with Jesus. So to say, and we're not sure, so if this person was a Sadducee, a Pharisee, a Zealot, or an Essene, and he is agreeing with Jesus, that's something, a very interesting point to remember in the Bible. So the scribe was said to him again, well said, teacher, you're right, teacher. Kalos, teacher, well said, teacher, you're right, teacher. This is true, verse 33, and to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding, with all the soul and with all the strength and to love one and one's neighbor as oneself is more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. It's more than all the burnt offerings and all of the sacrifices. Now, here it is. He really he reiterates what Jesus got through saying. Love all your heart, all your understanding, with all your soul, and with all thy strength. And then second is to love one's neighbor. So he, when Jesus quoted to him the Shema, this observing Jew would have known the Shema, because the Shema was quoted at all the all the mitzvahs, all the festivals, all the uh, sacrifices, all, it was quoted. They knew it. It was something. It wasn't something that just came out of the clear blue sky. That's why Jesus quotes it. And that's why we need to stand by it today to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with.
with all your strength. This is the first commandment. The second part of the verse, he says, and it's meant to love one's neighbor as yourself. There's no other greater commandment than these. That's why we've got to love each other. We've got to care about one another. And here it is. People say, well, I can't love that person. You don't know what they've done. And I, in the last message, I quoted, doesn't matter what they've done. You still got to love them. You still have to forgive them. Is that a hard thing to do? Heck yes, because people nowadays are so doggone ratchet and scummy and, and grimy, they'll do anything to somebody. But even with all of that said, you still got to love one another. I remember when I was a boy, there were these two female ushers in our church, and they were taking uh, up offering one day. And they had, one was on one side of the pews, one was on the other side of the pews, and they were passing the pan back. And one usher discovered that the other usher had, I, how did that go, it was many, many years ago, had didn't tell her her collar was in big one. She talked about that woman as she went down one aisle with the plate, one aisle, passing the plate back and forth, and, they're, and then they were talking about, well, it was talking about the other. When could you tell me you couldn't just, just give that a quick forgiveness and go on about your business? And that settled into a big beef between the two of them for quite some time. We've got to stop this type of foolishness in the church because if we don't stop it in here, we're not going to get people out there. You got winos out there passing bottles back and forth one another. You got weed heads passing, sitting in the gutter, passing weed out with one another. Here it is. They can do that, but in here, we've got to fight all the time. We've got to get rid of that type of mentality. It's not pleasing in the eyesight of God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, and to love one another as one's, as one's self is more than all the burnt offerings and the sacrifices. Now, you have to remember the burnt offerings and the sacrifices were something that was an integral part of who the Jews were. Their history tells us when some of the big... Uh, festival days were going on and they were sacrificing that meat that you could smell that meat for literally, figuratively, miles around, just the fat from it and now how fat that uh, if, it was a, if, it was a, if it was a bullock, if it was an oxen, if it was whatever, it, it just really it smelled good. So this here it is, but God says something about the more than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. First Samuel, the 15th chapter, verse 22. Has the Lord as much delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in, listen at this, obeying the voice of the Lord. Obeying the voice of the Lord is more important than the sacrifices. See, the sacrifices appealed to man smelling that meat. Was, oh my God. And the priests were going to eat it anyway, but here it is. Just, just the set, that was just something that appealed to man. But as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. That's a term we used to use. We don't use it much in church anymore because we don't like to sacrifice anymore. But the, the old preachers used to say obedience is better than sacrifice. This is where then that phrase and terminology came from. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of the ram. Can you imagine a, a ram, sheep, goat, that fat, that meat? Oh, I bet that meat was so good. But here it is, to obey the voice of the Lord was better than that. And to heed, and then it's better than, uh, uh, obedience is better than sacrifice and to heed the fat of the rams. Proverbs, the 21st chapter, verse 3. To do righteousness and justice is desired by the Lord more than sacrifice. Listen to that one more time. To do righteousness and justice is desired by the Lord more than sacrifice. We're to be righteous to one another, righteous in our behavior, righteous in our worship, righteous in the things that we do for the Lord and be of justice in everything that we do. That is desire of the Lord more than 
sacrifice. Hallelujah. That's why he's telling us this is one's neighbor as itself is more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifice. Hosea in the sixth chapter, verse six. For I delight in loyalty rather than sacrifice and in the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. That's Hosea in the sixth chapter, verse six. For I delight in loyalty rather than sacrifice. We are to be loyal to the Lord in everything that we do. But don't, be, don't be dishonest about it. Be loyal unto the Lord. Somebody's coming at you sideways about the Lord. Stand with the Bible. Stand by the word of God. Stand by the power of the Holy Ghost. Stand by God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And you really need to in these days in which we live in for sacrifice and in the knowledge of God rather than the burnt offering. So there's a, there's a certain segment of people today who are saying we need to go back to the burnt offerings. We need to go back to the sacrifice. No, we need to go forward. Listen at this last line in Hosea 6. In the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Brothers and sisters, that's what we are to be following. That's what we need to be following. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 34. Now when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. But after that, no one dare question him. Let's read that 34th verse one more time from the ESV version. And when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, uh, no one dared to ask him any more questions. The ASV version of the Bible says, when Jesus saw that he had answered intelligently, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one would venture to ask him any more questions. When we say uh, intelligently, uh, means monokos, sensibly, wisely, thoughtfully, mind in possession. Listen to that one again. Mind in possession. Hallelujah. Uh, pure wit. We have to have a pure wit about ourselves to the people to say that we're sane. So to say that Jesus said he answered him, he answered him intelligently. Jesus saw that he had spoken to him with understanding. When Jesus had answered, he had answered Jesus wisely. The teacher answered with the koming, which means wisdom. He said, when Jesus saw that he had answered thoughtfully and intelligently, then, hallelujah, we're about through. You are not far from the kingdom of God. But after that, no one dared to question him. When we say he answered him, not far from the kingdom of God. To get to that point, we need to look at John, the third chapter, verse 3 through 8. Jesus answered and said to him, talking about Nicodemus, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In order to be included in the kingdom of God, to have your name written in the Lamb's book of life, in order for you to be saved, you've got to be in the kingdom of God. Now, some people today think that they can be in Islam and in the kingdom. No, that doesn't matter. That doesn't go with Some say, I can be in Jainism and be included in the kingdom. No, you can't. Some will say, I can be part of Buddhism and be part of the kingdom of God. No, you can't. I can be in Hinduism and be in the kingdom of God. No, you can't. I can be in witchcraft. I can be in the Torah cards but and be part of the kingdom of God. No, you can't. You can't play with Ouija boards and be part of the kingdom of God. That when means the kingdom of God. It's talking about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This same Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, 
We know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do the signs that you do unless God is with them. Jesus said, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, they cannot come into the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can I be born when I'm old? Can I enter a second time into my mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born, Born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. This is where it really gets him hard. In verse 8, the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from. My brothers and sisters, I just want to submit this to myself. On windy days, I fear the wind more than I fear the rain. I fear it more than a hot, sunshiny day because the wind will come. You don't know where that wind is coming. You don't know from whence it's coming. You don't know where it's on its way to. You do not know. We do not know because the wind is designed. The wind is designed and pushed by God Almighty Himself, and it blows, and we cannot hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes and from where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit of God. So I'm here to tell you today: Are you getting? Are you close to being in the Spirit of God? Are you close to being following who God is? If you are not far from the kingdom of God, get in this Bible. If you're not saved today, get saved. Not praying today, you get saved. Accept Jesus in the Lord and in your life as your Lord and Savior. Not mixed or compartmentalized with other things, but the same Jesus that died on that cross, the same Jesus that died on that cross, was taken off of that cross, put in a borrowed tomb, and got up on the third day morning with all power in his hands. Thank God for the kingdom of God. I'm going to follow the kingdom of God until I am no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.